With it, an oversized chapeau of straw and organdy, punctuated with one giant blossom. Dorothy, glancing at the program, I see quite a few black and whites. Do I sense a news story coming on? Check it out for yourself, John. Black and white, the smartest fashion move on the board. In a regal mood, a fashionable cape in raven wing woolen. With those full skirts coming back in style, I would think this type wrap would be much in demand. Not really in demand, John. You see, there's a special type woman for this kind of styling. She has her own special brand of flair. She insists on the simple and the dramatic. And she wears the combination with a wonderful air of self-assurance. A cape by Monarch. If I might borrow your adjective, I'd say this coat has a sort of regal look, Dorothy. Yes, John, it's young, semi-fitted, and it has the look that's so often seen on Princess Margaret. It's wonderfully understated, punctuated only by three large cord buttons. Oh, now, Dorothy, even you'll have to admit that this takes courage. On the contrary, it takes just a bit of fashion foresight. This is the shape of things to come and one of the most applauded fashions in the recent New York opening. The label says Teal Trainer, one of our favorite designers who, in my opinion, can hold his own on either side of the Atlantic. But for those who lack the pioneer spirit, this nice man has included a small matching belt. Our Teal Trainer collection is in the crest room. Dorothy, the program says number 25 is a coat with dress. Does that mean it comes together as a unit? It does indeed. And one look at the price tag and you'll start believing in things such as magic. The coat in jet black has the upswept waistline that's repeated in the sheath underneath. From the dress circle, Myron Franks downtown, Lloyd's and Salem. Could be the ruffle neckline of today was inspired by a carving such as this. Imaginative Mr. Mort cut from linen, a figure defining fashion sheath scale for the junior figure. I rather anticipate you're going to ask that old standard, are juniors a size and or an age? I think even the most disinterested have long since learned that junior sizing has nothing to do with birthdays. Plated for a brilliant career, a crisply checkered sheath of a dress in woven textured cotton. You'll take a positive step forward this spring in a stacked heel pattern by Joyce. Say, here's an eye catcher. Uh, I mean the suit, naturally. Yes, it's the wonderful look we learned to love so much back in 1950. The shorter jacket, the nipped waist, and the wide, wide skirt. So what happens if one's waist is not so tiny? Well, one takes a quick trip to the foundation department at Myron Franks and ask for a waist venture by Warner. Well, Dorothy, I think I would safely say you could count on the male stamp of approval on this style. I know you'd have some bogish terms to describe it, but, well, to me, it's just plain pretty. Well, I think most women would find that satisfactory. Yes, it's a pretty dress created by Charles Cooper in Café Creme. With it, a wonderful turban of French net and organdy by Emmy. In banker's gray, a two-piece costume that might well be the most important in your art wardrobe. For the daylight hours, a business-like attitude. But come five o'clock, the jacket is removed to show a beautiful cocktail blouse of handsome snow-white lace.
Oh, Dorothy, this is a handsome-looking outfit. But doesn't that cape or poncho get a little bothersome after a while? I don't think so, John. But if it should, it can be easily removed to show a simple sleeveless sheath. By Mamselle in taupe and white woolen. This number in uh, Café Creme looks like it might have been part of your Oriental scene. Yes, it does have a Far East attitude, noted in the detailing on the skirt. We like the unexpected button that edge the curving. It's made of wonderful linen. Ah, you can look a long time before you come up with a better color combination than this one. A bright red coat over a dress of red, white, and blue. Yes, John, it's the spirit of 62. In a textured cotton over Arnell jersey. And the hat, uh, let's see, a slouch brim garbo close, right? Absolutely. Well, here's a name that pops up from time to time in my kind of news story, Oleg Cassini. Yes, Cassini, the official designer for the world's best-dressed woman. And Cassini has always stuck with this concept that an easy fitted sheath is the basis of all good fashion. In Cafe Crim, he's added two flap pockets just north of the waistline. in deep desert gold. Another one of those fashions you just described, John, as being just plain pretty. Simplicity at its very best, with all the interest on the softly sheared midriff, a fashion by Rembrandt. The name Junior Sophisticate is a cherished one to the fashion conscious woman in the seven, nine, eleven, and so on category. This three-piece costume is smartly done in cream with a sleeveless blouse of cafe, creme, darkened this time in silk. With it, a suture of gold by Napier. Lovely, aren't they, John? But wait till you see the twilight fashions. First, Rick Meyer. Yes, it's springtime. A shining new world of fashion at Meyer and Frank's. A woman's world of your own. Exciting new fashions in wonderful and dramatic settings of individual shops. It's fashion for every hour, every age, to fit every purse. Couturier gowns in the crest room. Famous American designs in dress circles. Lovely Lonsdale fashions for every day. Daytime dress labels read like who's who. The names you know and love to wear everywhere. Young-minded oat fashions in the Oregonian shop. And you'll want to visit Coat and Suit Salon, sports shop, and our delightful shop of intimate apparel. It's all there, a wonderful world of fashion that's fashion right at any price. At Meyer and Frank's, a place for everything in fashion in springtime. Day elegant. A delightful gown created a fluid black crepe by famous Larry Aldrich. A simple sheath dramatized with a cape like bodice. With it, an eye catching necklace of gold and rubies. The Aldrich collection is from the Crest Room. Enter the cocktail hour in a split level sheath by Edward Abbott. If you can use split level, I'll add it's trimmed in a picket fence type border. I'd say this might be the perfect answer to how to make a dramatic exit. 
Free flowing panels glide past the low arched back to stop just at the hem line. Matching the mood of the gown, a dramatic coiffure called. Let me guess, Cleopatra. Mr. Mort gives the 62 signature to the black crepe sheet via plunging V neckline. Ruffled, of course, typical of the season, and it's worn with dropped crystal earrings. These are by Vendome. I see what you mean about ruffles. They're, as you say, very chic in 62. The program says the crest room has it in black silk. The smartest way to base an evening breeze, a simple coating of silk cut in the collarless way. It comes in raven wing black. Layer upon layer of drifting chiffon glide you into the starlight hours by Edward Abbott of the Crest Room. A beguiling gown of falling petals. Tear after tear of gossamer chiffon. Another fashion from the Crest Room. Sharp contrast to the softness of chiffon, a solid shaft of fringe in the purest version of the newly popular twist dress. It comes in the season's prettiest pastels from the dress circle. Young as the season itself, an effervescent gown of silken organza designed to literally float you into spring, a wonderful dress when the occasion calls for black tie. A short ball gown, white silk in varying shades of turquoise, another crest room fashion. Another gown of gossamer silken chiffon and a chandelier sheath of starlight white. And the very best accessory, a sky of midnight black, sprinkled with sparkling stars. And for those nights when you simply must be beautiful, Frank Starr creates a gown of re-embroidered lace. The perfect escort, a coating of silk, tenderly trimmed to match the gown of petal pink. Yes, it's written in the stars. The loveliest fashions of them all were designed for springtime. The Meyer and Frank Company is presented Springtime, narrated by Dorothy Downing, Meyer and Frank's fashion director, and her guest, Mr. John Salisbury. This has been a KOIN television presentation. <laughs>